turns out I'm grinding now. Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Sapphire. Happy one in the morning. I'm some random pretentious jerk. And post C2I depression sucks. So, what am I doing? Um, yeah, I decided because if you head east from here, you get to another long route, and at the end of it, there's an event. However, you can't actually do this event until after you've beaten the Rustboro Gym. So I've just decided in the interest of making this as legitimate as possible, I'm just going to try and go through all of that in one run through and not go through it now with the excuse that, oh, if I were playing this game from the beginning, I would have no idea that there's an event there and that my one run through does not cover the entire route to the east of that. So instead I'm just going to grind for a bit, and then when I'm done with my grinding for a bit, I'm going to challenge, um, what's her face? Uh, Roxanne. So, I've said Roxanne is a rock type gym. She's got a Geodude and she's got her second Pokemon, which knows Rock Tomb, which is the really scary one because I don't know how many hits Mikalei can take of that, and I'm not really sure how I'm going to kill it. So, I think I'm just going to go in, and if worse comes to worse, I sincerely hope that I don't lose a Pokemon. If the situation arises in which that has to happen, I guess that will happen, but ideally I won't lose a Pokemon. I hope that I don't lose a Pokemon. So anyway, I would train here, but as we've seen, there is the occasional risk of running, running into a level 5 Wurmple. Level 5 Wurmples poison me, therefore we are going back to same old, same old, boring, grinding training spot. So, why might you ask, am I here at 1 in the morning and complaining about it to you? Um, I'm on Skype and nobody else is online for me to talk to, and I'm on AIM and I don't have anyone to talk to, and... God, I'm really tired, and post-CTY depression sucks. I went to CTY like a year ago, and I'm a one-hit wonder, for those of you who know what that means, and I'm getting hit kind of hard because it's been about a year since cause C2I is a summer camp and all my friends are coming home from it. And I don't really know why I'm doing this. I guess it's sort of a tendency of Let's Plays to degenerate into sort of vlogs of sorts. Maybe that has something to do with like, like the idea of writing into a diary that no one will ever read except people on the internet will read it slash watch it if they want to. So it's giving free access to all of your internal thoughts to just the entirety of the internet if they want, which might not be a good idea, but at the same time, I guess I can't really say that I mind that much because I can talk to you guys, but I don't even know if you guys exist, so, um... Right, so here I'm just burning through some water gun powerpoints in the hope of gaining a couple of levels of, for a uh, phantasm because oh crap, because um every experience point is going to be absolutely vital in the coming battle against Roxanne, who have I who as I have mentioned runs a rock type gym, rock type gyms being rather critically weak to the water type which I have. However. The flying type side of Phantasm means one rock type move from any of Roxanne's Pokemon, just any of them would spell utter disaster, one hit kill for um, my beloved Wingull, my beloved modest Wingull, who I love forever and I never want to see go. Um, maybe it's a good idea once I'm done in this particular section. To, um, oh, here's a Lotad. Lotads are free experience points for whoever wants them. Dinko wants them. Maybe it'd be a good idea for me to just burn those last um, water guns on level 2s that I know I can one hit KO. Crap, attack missed. Like, I think that's a pretty reasonable idea, just out of wanting to get as much experience, wanting to squeeze this for as much experience as I possibly can. Mm. 
I don't know what I'm gonna do about Scratch either, but... Like, am I going to heal before battling the Rustboro Gym Leader? It's an interesting question. It's actually very much not necessary for me to heal before I battle the Rustboro Gym Leader, isn't it? Is it? Um... I probably don't actually have to heal. I can probably get away with just using a potion here, and just healing him up to 27 out of 27, and then going in with my 10 or so water gun power points left. Actually, that is a very good idea. I am going to see if I can save myself a heal. How many water gun power points do I need? Like, three would be nice. Yeah, three would be nice. I'm gonna go with three. Three... Did I say three? I'm sorry, I'm talking to myself. Like, eight or so would be nice. Um, I'm gonna fight one or two more Pokemon, and then Phantasm will call it a day. So yeah, I'm just not going to heal going into this, and... I don't remember if there's a sand shrew in that gym or not. If there is, Phantasm has to deal with it, which would um, justify my using a potion, but... Another thing that would justify my using a potion is the, fa is the fact that very shortly they will become utterly worthless. Surskit, I haven't seen one of these in ages, and I have no idea how I'm going to deal with it. These things like to use bubble on me, and... Supersonic, why not? See, I said I would never use it, but this is a Water Slash Bug type Pokemon, so Water Gun doesn't exactly do a whole lot to it, so I figure I may as well hit it with Supersonic. It's going to do 2 damage to Phantasm and apparently lower my speed. Now I'm going to attempt to switch out to Ginkgo. This is actually dreadfully inconvenient. I have no Pokemon that can really... One turn of confu- one turn of confusion. Really? I go through all the effort of making Supersonic hit for that. A one turn confusion? See how much annoyingness the Surskit has spread around my team? It's just been so... annoying. Did I say that I would battle one more? I forget. Well, I will. Um, this is good, level 4, Phantasm, Awaken. Phantasm use Water Gun. This is good, failed to get me down to, um, 7, so... I think I'll go ahead and battle another... How many power points have I got? Eleven is pushing it, but I don't expect to use you for a whole lot, so yeah, I'll give it one more, and then I'll just and then I'll just be done, and then I'll just say that I'm done. Okay, so unless this water gun one hit KOs it, and it won't. Okay, so I guess, loath as I am to admit it, I am going to waste two hit points um, of possible potion heal on Phantasm, so that's that, I suppose. Um, continuing to the east, like I do, I am going to go find a place where... What's his name? 
Where Ginkgo, where Ginkgo one-shots Pokemon. And that is probably way down here, and Route 101 is probably the only place where Ginkgo one-shots anyone. Zigzagoon level 2. You are Zigzagoon level 8. Do you one-shot the Zigzagoon level 2? Actually, no, you don't. You do not one-shot the Zigzagoon level 2. That's a little embarrassing. Well, I want to train you up to 9, just because that might be when Headbutt is, and if that's when Headbutt is, then you will start one-shotting a lot more than Zigzagoon level 2s. Oh god, not a level 3! Anything but that, I'm really tired, guys. So, let's use Growl on me and stuff to lower my attack, which would be relevant were it not just a couple of hit points from fainting. From experiencing a chronic faint. There we go. There we go, okay. I'm just going to give you a little demonstration, because I feel it is unfair not to give a demonstration of the power of Headbutt at this moment. I feel for all the hype that I've given it, Headbutt needs at least something of a demonstration. So this is Headbutt. I hit him with my head, and he faints instantly. I can go show you the um, move page itself if you like. Fail. That will be a ramming attack that may cause flinching. 70 base power plus same type attack boost equals basically destruction on everything at level 9. And obviously it's going to be pathetic against Roxanne's rock type gym because rocks resist me hitting them with their head. But... Okay, so, here's a Wurmple then. I'm going to use a couple more Tackle Power Points until... I don't really know why I'm training him in this way. I think my goal right now is to get him to 7, so that, because when I get him to 7, then I'll know that I can use one of my last two potions to heal him back up to 4 or something. So, I'm gonna just do that, guys. Actually, it occurs to me that I could just as easily do that later. So, like, I have no reason to do that now. I'm not going to be using Ginkgo in this coming battle. The battle against Roxanne, Ginkgo will sit by quietly and do nothing because I am scared for his life. As always, so... Um... God... Okay. Let's go then. Okay, so do you see that? How I left the berries unpicked for a while and they turned into sprouts? I do not. That's what happens if you leave the berries unpicked. They fall off and then they turn into plants. And then they regrow and... It continues like that in an endless aggravating cycle until you pick a berry. So I'm never going to pick any of those berries, so they will just aggravate me forever, I suppose. Um, see, those haven't sprouted. Uh, as far as Mikalay's Ember goes, this may be a beneficial time for me to use an Ether, actually. I don't know how many power points I will have to use to get this to, um... Huh. Actually, I just had a better idea, an idea that does not involve using any Amber Power Points, which is going back to where I was, and then training there with Scratch for a bit, until I am confident that I won't end up using all my Amber Power Points getting him to 16. And once I get him to 16, that, and once I get uh, Mikole Kishi to 16, then... I should probably be in decent shape against Roxanne, and if not, then I guess I'll die and end of Let's Play, but hopefully it won't come down to that. Is Scratch a one-hit KO? Yes. See, there we go. Mikolay's inflated Scratch is a one-hit KO. So, I should be able to just battle Pokemon here with... Because, like, 
I don't really think it's likely that I'm going to find a situation where I need Scratch. I need to use Scratch and not Ember, especially not this early in the game because for all the Pokemon that resist Ember, by which I mean Rock types, and like we haven't even encountered a Water type yet that doesn't resist Ember. I don't Oh, magic card, but that doesn't count. And I don't think we will for sort of a bit, so... I don't really see much use in keeping full power points on both, especially when I know the heal is coming decently soon. Like, I'm not going to heal Mikale right now, because, as I've said, I want to save the heal for after the gym, if, that's at all, if that is at all possible. And... My suspicion is that it is, and it will be good if it is, because then I will have two in the bank. And these backup heals are going to become immensely useful for when I inevitably screw up and get poisoned or something like that. I don't even know if there are any antidotes on the ground in this game anywhere. Antidotes being the item that heals poison. I wonder what this Pokemon will be. Will it be interesting? Um, not really, but it will be a free switch into. God, who wants to switch in here? Why not? Lily, you can have some experience points. I'm not going to train you anytime soon, after all. You can't one hit KO anything, so I may as well give you a bit of experience. Doesn't seem like such a bad idea. Oh, you've got some decent attacking ability there. Dang. I must say, I'm impressed. I expected you to do worse than that, but... Oh, I'm sorry. Well, I... I sort of did, but... Eight. I guess that's alright. So, Phantasm's going to be at level nine going into this. No. It's that part that leaves me a little bit... Uh, honestly, I'm probably going to use my potion on him now. Yeah, I think that's how it's got to go. I think i got to use my potion on Phantasm now, just because I'm a little freaked out by the prospect of him going in with such low hit points. So... Uh, Something else that's sort of a bother is the fact that, um, Mikale obviously has to go into this with absolutely full hit points because he's going to be the linchpin. That may not be obvious now, but he is in fact going to be the linchpin in this battle against Roxanne and hopefully the only one that has to take damage unless this all goes horribly wrong and many, many terrible... Uh, okay. Just before I forget. Oh good, I have three potions. That's one more than I thought I did. I'm just going to heal Phantasm's hit points. Before I forget. So... I may look like I'm in pretty bad shape for taking on Roxanne, and if I had to battle her right now, that's true, but... Mikale is only... a tiny sliver of experience away from becoming very much more useful and very much- ooh, Ralts. This is an excuse to gain experience for someone else. When I think about it, using Lily here over, like, Precept seems sort of silly, because... Precept is the one who is going to need to eventually be evolved if I'm going to make use of him if I'm going to make use of her. That said, I'm not entirely sure that I am going to make use of her, so make of that what you will. It had Trace, not Synchronize. I remember it having Trace. Therefore, I can poison it and not freak out about getting myself poisoned. So here, I will use the evils of Poison Sting against it to demonstrate what I was so afraid of earlier. And I'm still sort of terrified of, but... Thankfully, I haven't quite... Thankfully, I haven't quite, um, subjected myself to poison 
I haven't quite been so unlucky as to have been hit with- This attack has a 30% chance of poisoning things. Why hasn't this been poisoned yet? I enjoy poisoning Ralts because I'm a miserable little person who likes to watch them suffer. Okay, I actually like Ralts. Ralts is kind of adorable and it evolves into some very great Pokemon, but... I will not be taking that route this game. I did that once before on my very first copy of Pokemon Ruby that I lost. Level 48 final form of Ralts against the Elite Four and I lost it. And it was very sad. I remember I was using that final form of Ralts against um the first Elite Four member and I could only damage the and I could only damage him by teaching him Hyper Beam. At this point I didn't realize that Hyper Beam was a physical move because it was normal type and therefore that it was coming off of Gardevoir's terrible attack, and that was why I was getting no damage in, but... God, I don't really know if I want to talk to someone right now, or what, like... I don't really know what exactly I'm hoping for. I mean, obviously right now I'm hoping for beating Roxanne without suffering terrible, terrible casualties amongst my Pokemon, but don't really know what I'm hoping for, hoping for. I'll figure something out. So, I should be able to beat Roxanne if I get lucky. It's still one in the morning. It's past one in the morning. I should really go to bed. I haven't really gotten any productive work done today or anything like that. Just kind of babbled idly and talked at my computer screen for a couple of hours. Ooh, Lily, pretty close to level 6 there. In just three more levels, you'll learn Headbutt and be a force to be reckoned with. Wurmple, level 4. Bloody terrifying. Okay, well... You guys are about to catch your first taste of something awesome, possibly the most awesome thing in the Pokemon universe. So, I guess, consider yourselves treated? Not that there would ever be a Pokemon game where this doesn't eventually happen, but... Here we are. Ah, that's how it goes. I get Peck first, and then... Okay. I'm going to forget Growl because I will never use it. Period. Okay, and here we are. There we go, Mikale is trying to learn Double Kick. My saving grace against Roxanne this move is. Double Kick, 30 base power, but it strikes twice for a cumulative base power of 60. Now, running off of Mikale's same type, type attack bonus, yep, Combuskin is part fighting type. That should sum to a total of 90 base power, but... Fighting is super effective against rocks, so you can multiply that by 2 to reach a total equivalent base power of 180, which is not too shabby off of level 16. So the question here is, do I forget Focus Energy or do I forget Scratch? I've used Focus Energy exactly once, and Scratch is good for um, power points for making myself not die. The answer here is pretty clear, I think. Hmm. It should be focus energy, but... I should forget focus energy, and I know that I should, but a part of me wants to not, because a part of me thinks that and now this is really sketchy, and it's a terrible idea, but if I used it against Roxanne, it just 
might provide me with that well-timed critical hit that I need to put myself over the edge. I'm probably never going to use Scratch again, besides just to get myself some weak early KOs, so... Do you know what? I'm going to regret this later, but let's forget Scratch. Okay, I have a lot less- I have a lot fewer power points to work with now, but I'm okay with that. I am okay with that because... Okay. Lily has an item. I'm going to take it, and it's a full heal, and I'm going to put it in the Pokemon Center now. In my PC. Right. Wrong. Incorrect. This one. Right, so let's check out the differences between Mikale now. See those stats? Do you witness their awesome improvement? Look at that. An attack of 37 next to um, Phantasm special attack of 17. Is that not the height of ridiculousness? Also, power points. Like, so many power points. Heck has 35 power points now, and I can totally burn those on wild Pokemon here if I want to. And by the way, I want to. Well, actually, it could be more. No, okay. Yep, yeah, I'll totally, I'll totally burn them on some wild Pokemon here. I'm going to use Peck a couple of a number of times in the neighborhood of 20 now. And hopefully the end result of this will be training Mikale a couple more levels. Because, as I have said, I'm going to need every experience point that I can muster in the fight against Roxanne. Luckily, Peck one-hit KOs these before I can freak out about Poison Sting. Every experience point in the fight against Roxanne is going to matter a lot, and so... I want my Pokemon to be as strong as they can possibly become. I'm just going to use Double Kick on this one as sort of a demonstration. That was one hit. The move hits twice. Could have KO'd the Zigzagoon at least twice over, and I wouldn't be surprised if in truth I could have KO'd the Zigzagoon several times more than twice over. Right, Wingo time. Um, this goes down easiest with Peck. Hopefully, hopefully I'm not going to regret what I did back there. Scratch. Actually, I'll bet I do end up regretting it, but... Hopefully, I will not regret what I did back there with Scratch. With forgetting Scratch. Because... Those are 11 power points that could be contributing to, um, Mikale's growth. And if you look at Scratch, it's even more than 11, it's several. But if Focus Energy turns out to be worth it, and I suspect that it might, just maybe if I'm lucky, Focus Energy could save me the day against Roxanne's last Pokemon. Just a couple of lucky critical hits off of Double Kick and focus energy will be worth it. See, here's the thing about focus energy, because it increases the critical hit ratio for every hit that I get off on the opponent's Pokemon. Double kick hits twice, and each individual kick thus has a heightened chance of going critical. Which is, in my opinion, sort of excellent, because it increases the power of double kick sort of considerably. When I think about it, I question that play, actually, and I think that were I less tired, I wouldn't have forgotten Scratch like an idiot. Like... 
Focus energy increases the um, critical hit ratio by, I think, two stages. It's either two stages or one stage. It's actually kind of marginal. <laughs> I'm actually regretting it already. I shouldn't have done that. I really shouldn't have done that, but oh well, it's not going to make much of, much of a difference in this particular go against Roxanne. I'm going to try to train Mikolay up to 18. If I get lucky, this will work. Oh yeah, I think I'm going to be fine. I'm going to hit 18, no, I'm going to hit 18, no problem, I think. Obviously, that sort of bold assertion requires some luck to come true, but yeah, I'm just going to go through here to the um, other end of Petalburg Woods because that's where I'm going to have to be to challenge Roxanne because guess what? That is where that next city is. Uh, Zigzagoon level 5 equals Easy Prayer for Mikale. So... Yeah, suddenly Mikolay just destroys everything. That's the thing about having evolved Pokemon at level 16, going up against training on level 5 wilds. Or wild Pokemon in the neighborhood of level 5. Mikolay is sort of an annihilator at this stage in the game. And that's fortunate, because he's on my side and not on the side of Roxanne. Honestly, I think if Roxanne had a Combuskin, then none of this would be remotely possible. But thankfully, Roxanne's Pokemon are not as strong as a Combuskin is, and are instead significantly weaker. Uh, when I think about it, I wouldn't have gotten a whole lot. I wouldn't have gotten a ton of use out of Scratch anyway. Like. At least this is an excuse to grind considerably less. I guess. It's, it's an excuse to, um... Attempt to extract less levels out of Mikolay. I don't think it will put me behind by a lot. I'm not too concerned. Okay, so... To be safe, I don't want to fall below 15-ish uses of double kick remaining for going into Roxanne, because I do not know how many I'm going to need for post-Roxanne. Right, Zigzagoon level 4. I'm a little bit less worried about, um, Peck. Do you know what? The thing about level 17 is... It's good enough, and there's a good chance I'll need those power points. So... I think this is good and done, actually. 17 is good and done, I'm saving the power points for the eventualities of Duford Town. So, for rainy day, I suppose. So, alright. Um, I've not healed up at all. And I'm not going to, instead. Well, I am. I'm going to use a potion on Mikale to heal off seven hit points. It's a disgusting waste, and I have to. Because... I do not trust Roxanne not to tear me limb from limb without that, so Nikolay's HP was restored by 7 hit points, and wish me luck! Until next time.